What the f*** is we doing? Go for it. All right. So welcome back, everybody. Um, technically, this is our second attempt at this, so let's see if this goes smoother than the last time. Uh, the topic of conversation is going to be corruption in third world countries. Uh, given the fact that Michael's doing a little bit of backpacking and traveling throughout the, the Asia Peninsula, uh, it's not a peninsula, throughout the, the Asian countries of uh, Indonesia and Thailand, um, you're getting to see more of that kind of experience because obviously you already come from a technically third world country in Ecuador, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's more considered second world at this point, but in any case, um, How's that? How's the experience been so far? Have you kind of seen corruption in the sense of like, you know, government agents or just stuff that's being let go on the sly where if you were like in America, you wouldn't let that happen. You wouldn't see stuff like that happening. Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, apologize for you know, taking some time to talk. But uh, due to scheduling reasons, that's the main the main issue here now. But we're trying our best to uh, keep this rolling. Now, uh, interesting question, I believe, just because that was kind of the first impression as soon as I arrived to Southeast Asia. Um, so I arrived to Bali, which is in Indonesia. And I had some interesting situations with immigrations at that country uh, where um, so I got the visa on arrival, but for which we need a return ticket out of the country. And what happened was is that uh, I didn't, because I didn't know where I was going to go next. So whether I was going to go to the Philippines, Thailand, or other country, I just didn't know yet at that point. So what happened was that the immigration guy is that the immigration agent is like, Hey, you actually need a return ticket. Um, otherwise, we cannot grant you entry to the country. And I'm like, okay, I can. If I need to buy a ticket, I can just buy it. Um, I, it was just kind of like in the rush at the moment, and the agent is like, it's straightforward, like on plain sight. He's, um, hey, but you know, I can help you out, but uh, what do I get in return? Like he didn't only say it once; he said it like twice, and I knew exactly what he was asking for. Uh, once again, as you mentioned, coming from Ecuador, you see corruption everywhere. And that's something that I have dealt in the past and I know how to handle it. So all I said was like, hey, you're getting my tanks and that's all. Like with, you know, like a straight face. And now, now he took this seriously. I don't say at that point, I kind of was playing with fire because like he could easily not let me in the country. <laughs> but he, once again, he uh, went a different approach. He started saying to me like, um, oh, I like beer, I like wine, you want to grab something afterwards? Or do you have something uh, with you that I, you know, you can give me? And I'm like, no, listen, I'm not giving you anything. Um, if I need to buy a flight out of the country, I can easily just do that now and we can resolve this. And eventually he just let me in, but we were there for like five minutes online, just like back and forth about the situation. So that was my first actual impression uh, getting into in the Indonesia, into Bali. Or now I'm in Thailand. I haven't really come across with a situation personally. Appreciation is out there. Like I think uh, that's, the, that's the case for most of most third world countries where corruption is just on plain sight. And now we can just kind of like speak or dive into more about why do you think this is the case? Like, in your opinion, why you think corruption is very present? Right. Well, especially in, in like, again, like third world countries where essentially the way the distribution of power is, it's consolidated in a, in a small section of people, right? So a small group of people. Um, and again, it doesn't even have to be third world countries. Like you can see this in a lot of smaller environments. Where, you know, the people that have the money or the people that have the political influence and have the connections, um, you know, they're the ones that kind of dictate how things go, right? Um, mm-hmm. Eventually, that ends up being like, you know, they will do stuff that harms others because it benefits them, right? 
that you were mentioning with the entering into Indonesia to begin with um, and dealing with immigration, right? Like he's in a position of power and, you know, if you're somebody that can easily be manipulated, you know, you'll give in to whatever the demands are, right? If you just wanted something very small from you, just like, you know, a bottle of alcohol or whatever. But for other people, you know, it's extorting money or, you know, doing some sort of favor, right? Um, some sort of like physical favor. Like at the end of the day, for me, it's a matter of if you are in a position of power and there's no checks and balances, then that's kind of where corruption ends up becoming a thing. Right? Um, if you come to America, it's very, I mean, you will see it for sure. You definitely will see corruption. Uh, but it's rare to see it out in the public like that or out in the open. It usually happens behind closed doors where you can't really notice it and you don't know what's really happening. But in third world countries, like it'll happen right in front of you or it will happen to you. Right? Uh, coming from, or at least from my home country that my family's from, the Dominican Republic, that's a big thing. Uh, specifically with the police and the military, there's a lot of corruption in there in the sense that they're kind of allowed to do whatever they want and everybody kind of just looks the other way. Right. And if there ever is an issue where, you know, the police officers or the people in the military get in trouble, you know, they'll be bailed out by the politicians or vice versa, right? The politicians will be bailed out by the military, uh, whatever the, whatever the situation might be. Yeah. At the end of the that's, day, if there's no specific checks and balances, that's kind of what ends up happening. Absolutely. I, I agree with you that it's a matter of power and just having the upper hand. Um, now we see corruption really present when it comes to like, uh, police or like, um, you know, like government agents, just because they know they have the power and they can either fuck you up, like, you know, not physically, but like, you know, whatever is happening, like whether it's a transit violation or just immigration, or this sort of stuff, they know they have the upper, they have, they have the upper hand and they have the power to give you answers or not. And they can get something in between. So I think that's definitely a huge player, uh, power and just knowing that they have the advantage on it. Now, the uh, one thing that comes to my head and is the need for people, especially like in third countries economics where, um, you know, life, the life, um, the quality of life is not as great as in other countries or developing countries. I think the need kind of like forces them. They know they have the power. Now they have the need uh, to sustain the families. And sometimes their vices, like sometimes it's not even to take the money to their families, it's just to kind of like for themselves, you know. And they just mm -hmm. do it because they have the need. And yeah, I think uh, morally I'm super against it. And you have been present. Uh, I remember in what was it like 2021 with the road trip around there uh we got to stop yeah. a couple times with the police and i refused to like give the money i would tell them like straight up just give me the ticket and if not i can you know if if you know if you don't give me the ticket it's all right i just leave but i refuse to give like anything like a dollar to them because for me mm -hmm. uh cor how corruption works is that the people that give in and not the people that ask for it. so it's always like a system and like you mentioned, the check and balances. So if you're not, if you refuse to give in, then corruption, I'm not saying it's going to disappear, but it's going to have a lesser of an effect because they know they cannot get their way when people kind of like, um, doesn't give in, you know? Uh, so that's kind of like my stance on it when it comes to corruptions. It's so fucked up to see how many countries is like, honestly, my, my speaking from, for my country, like such a beautiful country going to shit just because corrupt politicians, corrupt, like corruption is there and there's not that checks and balances that, uh, thankfully United States does have, honestly, in a sense. Um, like you mentioned, there is corruption there. We don't, we don't know about it. We feel it. It's definitely behind closed doors, but there is a matter of more regulations than there is. Um, you know, there's a penalty. For it when that happens, or when they get caught, and it's more severe than in other countries. So, I think, yeah, yeah, like it's not even like there's a lot of situations where you know presidents get involved with a bunch of like scandals or issues, and 
you know, they just get a slap on the wrist and a third world country. Uh, we're mm-hmm. here, you, we're at least in the United States, you know, you get impeached, you lose your power, you lose your position. So in that sense, like, that's where the checks and balances come into play. But again, okay. it happens everywhere. Like, you can literally experience this at a nightclub, right? A bouncer doesn't let you in. <laughs> or some situation yeah. like that. Like, we've had that experience, right? Um, mm-hmm. Now, that's a very specific dynamic, you know, between, you know, like, men and women, you want to keep a good ratio in the club, or the bouncer just doesn't like you, that, that can be corruption, right? And if you give the guy 20 bucks, he'll let you in. Um, yep. So it happens at every stage of life. Like, it's not something where it only happens on, like, the highest level of, like, with government and politicians. Um, it's just, if you put somebody in a position of power, and there's not a system in place to see if this person is right for the, the, the job or the work, mm-hmm. corruption will eventually happen, right? Because power gets to people, right? Um, I forget what the expression is called. Absolute, power corrupts absolutely or something like that. Um, no, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Something like that. Um, Got it. Yeah, I know, I know what you're trying to say. It's a matter yeah. of like, once you have the taste of power and you know that you can get a little bit more out of it with the power that with the power that you have, you want to have a little bit more. You want that extra, the extra hustle. And don't get me wrong, that that's probably a good way to hustle, but it's at an extent of corrupting people, uh, you know, morally, because now the people that get corrupted or like that are paying off for it. They are probably going to learn and do that to other people. There's a constant by cycle that has a domino effect. And yeah, like you mentioned, it, you see this at every stage of life. When somebody gets uh, a taste of power and they know that they get it a little bit more, they will do it. And that's the sad truth of it. So, yeah. But uh, my recommendation in that sense, obviously. Like you do, right? You want it to stop with you. And hopefully if enough people do that, people will learn their lesson. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, or a majority of the time, that's really not going to happen, right? Because whether, maybe you didn't give in, but the guy after you does, right? So he gives in to the immigration officer or the the police officer trying to write you a ticket. Um, Hey, man, at the end of the day, try to put yourself in situations where you don't have to give in, right? Um, it's inevitable. It will happen, but as best as you can, just don't put yourself in those positions because you put, you're playing a really risky game, right? Because going back to that immigration officer, that could have very easily escalated into you going to prison mm-hmm. or whatever the reason might have been, right? Um, so in a situation like that, again, you want to make sure that you are you check. Or you make sure you do everything in your power that you have control over so mm-hmm. that you're not put in a compromised position to be with. And that's pretty yeah. much it for my end. Absolutely. Yeah, and like you mentioned, uh, I Uh-oh, did not give in. Connection. Uh, it sucks. Okay, my internet might be. I'm outside the hostel that we okay. did, but we're anyways, back. we're back. We're I back. think I think we could, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cut that, cut. Anyways, yeah, like you were mentioning, um, when it comes to, to my situation that happened here, specifically when we I did have heard the stories, and I took about more. It's a lot of more crazy happening. A lot of I, I did meet a couple of people that actually went through a similar situation that I did and they actually end up paying like um not just like five dollars it's two dollars they end up paying almost like fifty to a hundred dollars to the officer just to get the done just to get the sorted out uh which is really fucked up and I was telling my story to them and I was like you could have easily just book a flight out of the country and then just cancel it because that was actually the idea that I had. Like as soon as you know uh he told me that I needed a return ticket I was like okay I'm just going to book a flight ticket to Thailand with the option to cancel it. And, you know, if I decide not to go to, mm-hmm. to Thailand at the time, I can just cancel it. That's as simple as that. As long as I'm within, you know, like, look at my, my visa limit, which it was 30 days, I will be good. So it's, it's a matter of just coming with different solutions, different approaches, and just a way to 
um, be true to yourself in the sense that I'm morally inclined to not give in in finding alternatives to just let him laugh to himself when, uh, because he laughed at me uh, when I said, like, you're getting my times and that's all. And <laughs> so I was like, okay, you're getting that and that's it. Like, <laughs> it was so funny because I did not, well, I look, he did expect corruption to be present, but not like that, not like in plain sight. But uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. Uh, I haven't come, come across any of that now in Thailand uh, yet. I'm only using my second day second here. So um, yeah, we will see how that goes. Yeah. But um, again, as long as you make a plan or like if you're prepared for the worst scenario, then you could be in a good position, right? Because again, you already had a plan in case something like that was going to happen to begin with. So mm -hmm. worst comes to worst, you can book the flight and cancel it. Um, but right. most people go into situations without a plan. They just kind of go into it, not really thinking much, um, and be very dangerous. So we do your best to prepare as best as you can. Right. So kind of deviating a little bit from the topic, um, just going back to something that you mentioned about getting, you know, once you acquire some power, you become corrupt. How do you think someone who grew up morally, you know, righteous or like just, once they get to a certain level of power, it can be corrupted? And why do you think that happens? If so, why do you think that? It's tough because I can't necessarily tell you specifically when or why. It doesn't really matter because, you know, there's a lot of people that have shitty upbringings but end up being good people. Um, and vice versa, there's people that have had really good upbringings and end up just being shitty people. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, where that flip happens or that switch happens. It's Because it's different. It depends on the stage of life, life experience. Um, and just kind of how you've been treated in the world and what you've gotten out of it. Uh, I don't think that if everybody... So there's a ongoing conspiracy that, you know, people that get elected as presidents into the United States, like they go in with the best of intentions, but eventually, whether they like it or not, they have to conform to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they want to do great things, they can't because realistically they're not the ones with the power. Yep. Um, and then eventually they end up becoming corrupt or they end up needing to do stuff that's not right, which eventually leads them to become corrupt because now they, they can be blackmailed because they did this thing that wasn't right. And, you know, if they don't follow through with what the powers that be want, then, you know, they'll be thrown into prison. So I can't right. really tell you, man. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, you made a great argument there. And... Um, okay, so this is my kind of like theory or maybe just like my observations on uh, when it comes to not just politicians, which, you know, people who get acquired or go into power. I think is once they start hanging out with people that are corrupt, they're a little bit more inclined to become corrupt themselves. Now, and right. like you mentioned, like uh, it's kind of like a situation like you either do my way or you go to the highway. It's kind of like that kind of situation when it comes to one <laughs> once they reach to that certain level of mm -hmm. power. And, yeah. okay, so my point is that once you reach to certain points, you have to either play the game or be played. <laughs> if that makes sense. So, like, if you play the game, that means, like, you got to go along with the people who have been there for longer. And maybe they have some sort of corruption going on or some, you know, some sketchy ways of doing things. Or you're going to keep played and just left out. I mean, you're not going to be able to do much when it comes to, like, your duties or the good that you want to do. And I think that's going to be the side true for a lot of politicians. Um when it comes to, you know, getting elected and trying to do good and right eventually failing because they are not adapting themselves. So I think yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a quite quite a dilemma, honestly. Quite quite a dilemma when it comes to being good, but at the same time playing with the wolves or playing with the sharks. Yeah, because eventually that sort of ends up coming, right? Like until you 
deal with a certain caliber of people that can actually get things done, you know, you're not really going to be doing much. And eventually, once you maybe eventually get to that point, um, you need to conform. Otherwise, if you don't, then you won't be in that position anymore. Right. Yep. Uh, but anyways. It is what uh, it is. Again, for us, we obviously still super young, so we still haven't experienced <laughs> that that level yet. Fact. But anyways, do you have anything else to add to that topic? Any any questions lingering there? In the back of your head? No, I think it's it's a topic that will always be left open for discussion. Right? It's not something that we can close the chapter on because it's something that's <laughs> ongoing. And again, you'll probably have some more experiences to talk about as you, you know, go through Thailand. Uh, it's just a matter of do you conform? Do you give in? Do you come up with solutions to the problem? Right? Do you put yourself in a better situation so you don't fall prey to corruption uh, or somebody trying to do something that you don't want to happen? That's on you. But yeah, that's my perspective. Anyways, we can close it there then. Another episode with the books. Peace out. See ya when I see ya. Hasta la vista. This is a conversation between friends. None of what is said here should be taken as legal advice. We are not experts in any way. Take what resonates and leave the rest. <laughs>